To God be the glory and praise, brothers and sisters, I would like to share my dream data July 9, 23. In this dream, I was with my husband in this place when this guy passed by wearing a suit, well-dressed, and I look at his eyes and face in this dream. He is a good-looking guy, and I was like tickled, and he saw me and knows it. I don't want to do this. I don't want to sin against the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. This is like trying to show us how flirting will end up in sin and its result. There's a lot of good-looking men and women, but we don't want to flirt or be tickled to see them. This is trying to warn us of the danger of flirting. So in, then, I saw myself walking in this office or workplace wearing a suit and I walk so slow because I know that this guy is there and to get his attention, which I rebuke in Jesus' name. You know, I, I don't want to sin against the Lord in, in Jesus' name. But this is trying to show us a, a scenario, you know, job scenario, whether corporate or whatever workplace in the, you know, it is. It could be in your workplace, neighborhood, in a bar, church, or other places. That people should stop flirting in order not to sin. Because flirting might end up to cheating or fornication, which they will sin against the Lord. So then I continued to walk to this house and the guy was following me. The house was a mess, filthy, dirty, and lots of rats on the floor. I felt disgusted and embarrassed because of its filthiness and he saw the mess too i don't want to sin against the lord just like what i said earlier in jesus name amen they show us how a lot of people literally live in a felt a filthy messy house but at the same time their spiritual life is also the same thing for all the sins they do in their life then in this particular house also i saw a dog eating rats and licking the blood of the rats on the floor. Remember, brothers and sisters, that God compared men to animals and even a house. So just like the sheep and the goats, swine and the wolves, dogs that eat their own vomit or filth or go back to their own sins. This also reminded me of the story of Jezebel who died and was eaten by dogs. And we will see the connection of this scenario later. The house in this dream was so filthy. This could be literal. How people live in their field, so lazy to clean their own home, but they have time to put makeup on and dress well, but they can clean their house. The house also symbolizes our body, the body of a person, as we were compared to a house. God clearly said, put your house in order because our house is the temple of God. We wanted it clean and organized. Proverbs 3 verse 33. The Lord curse is on the house of the wicked, but he blesses the home of the righteous. Then I continue walking in this hallway and saw patients walking to see a doctor who is at the end of the hallway. They are sick with masks. So I was like thinking, is there another pandemic that will the people will be wearing masks again. So this is a hospital scenario. A lot of people will be sick. Is there going to be another plague or pandemic? And others will also be sick because, you know, because of their sin that they commit, which we can find in the Bible. That's why Jesus is our great doctor who heals us as he heals the blind, the lame, and other people in the Bible. So then I walked back and saw this man again standing at the hallway and I was like walking sad that he told me to sit down and he sat on the opposite side of the couch. You see, when people sin, there's consequences and if they don't repent, Satan sent people or other people or particular people to tempt them more. When you're down, when you're depressed, you tend to listen and you tend to listen to wrong people. They will drown you more in sin. When you have trouble at work or fight at home, it will cause trouble, stress, and depression to all persons involved. If you stand strong with the Lord and don't go with the temptation, God will guide you to eat, you know, guide God will guide you. And you will even use by God to even advise people who's flirting with you to stop and to do what is right and don't sin against their spouse, other people, their self, and not to sin against God. So when people commit sin, all you have to do is turn to Jesus because God is faithful and he will not let you be, be you know, he won't let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide a way of escape that you may be able to endure it. He said that in 1 Corinthians 10 verse 13. 
So in this dream, my boss told me to go to go work in another area and she left. It's a huge resort park in this dream. I can't find where she wants me to go, what to do, and told others she will deal with me. I saw her later checking on me, so I told her, where do you want me to go? And she just said, I can walk around and look at the entire area. So I was like shocked with her answer. She is not helping me. She's like making it hard on me. So I told her how people are looking up high on her, a supervisor or manager, and she should do her job properly. She's speaking on her employees to make them mess up for whatever reason she has. She's probably having problems at home or she's having argument, whatever it is. Don't bring your problem at work and don't pick on people. And you being an employee, when you see your employer doing this, we're not supposed to fight back as well. So I was so upset to upset with what she did and trying to do so i turn around and walk away as employees you could be dealing with people who don't know god they could be haters but instead of fighting back when you know they're bullying you or picking on you you should show kindness love and respect bless them for they will surely be touched by god then i saw the woman you know I, was, I saw this woman dragging herself on the ground, making herself and her clothes dirty. We don't, want, we don't want to make ourselves and clothes dirty, and we don't want to be a part of this sin. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord said in Revelation 19, verse 7, Let us rejoice and be glad and give him the glory, for the marriage of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. She was given clothing of fine linen, bright and pure, for the fine linen, she wears is the righteous acts of the saints. So therefore, brothers and sisters, our clothes are actually symbolizing the righteous deeds that we're doing. That's why we don't want to sin because you don't want to make your clothes filthy. Then I was in this car with these two guys and the driver smashed the garage door of this house in a hurry to reach the room. We all went to this room and I saw a woman sleeping with a guy beside her. The woman in bed is... Uh, uh, you know, the woman in bed with a guy, you know, her party, uh, her panty was still exposed. And then she was rushing to put her, you know, her pants on and the guy in bed with her, you know, sleeping with her uh, is helping her to put her pants on. It seems that the driver in the car where I was with is the husband and caught her wife sleeping with somebody else. She's cheating. Brothers and sisters, adultery is a grave offense that's condemned throughout history. It's a clear betrayal of the sacred bond between husband and wife. God clearly said, thou shalt not covet adultery. Matthew 5, 43, 45, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you, that you may be children of your father in heaven. We're just talking about two things here, brothers and sisters. When you are dealing with your boss that they're, or co-workers that they're picking on you or your classmates or whoever in the family member that's bullying you, remember, we need to forgive them and pray for them. How much more with the husband who caught their wives cheating or the wife caught their husband cheating, we need to ask the Lord for strength and forgiveness. So I, you know, I walk away after this dream. I walk away and so the ground crack open. And as I look, I saw red lava burning inside the crack in the ground. The road was a straight line crack and it's going to open with the lava on it. So I turn around and go back. Is there going to be, I was like thinking, is there going to be an earthquake that triggers volcanic activation? You know, brothers and sisters, there are signs that will happen in these end times. And also, this is also very symbolic that we know the punishment of sin is death. And we all know who practice sexual immorality and other sins will not enter the kingdom of God. And they will be thrown in the pits of burning sulfur. That's why it's like trying to say, if you continue with your sin, you're already... Uh, you already committed sin and then you're fighting with your spouse and you're fighting with your co-workers and you're doing more sin over and over. You don't want to drag yourself, making yourself filthy, getting angry, getting mad. You know, those are murders. And then after that, you don't want to drag yourself and end up into the pits of hell. That's how the dream is trying to show us. And so in this dream, 
instead of going and uh, going into that lava ground, I turned back and told my supervisor and manager, whatever you plan to harm me will go in you in Jesus' name. Amen. And that's what I said, which I repent in Jesus' name. Amen. Because I don't want to sin against the Lord. And as I wrote the dream, the Lord, you know, the Lord put it in my heart, the words in Romans 12, verse 17 to 20. Repay no evil for evil, but give thought to do what is honorable in the sight of all. If possible, so far, as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Don't pay evil with evil, but pay evil with good. So live in peace with everyone. You know, they will answer to the Lord. So God is reminding me not to curse or fight back, but Leave it in the hands of the Lord. The Lord said in Romans 12, 19 to 21, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourself, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And so, you know, it also reminded me with the music that we have right now, because the music we have right now is Psalm 59, coming from Psalm 59, sung by Esther Moy. It says, Deliver me from my enemies, O my God. Defend me from them that rise up against me. Deliver me from the workers of iniquity and save me from bloodthirsty men. I will wait for you, for you are my strength, for God is my defense, my God of mercy. He is our defense. So whatever people are going to do, we know God is there for us. He will never leave us. He will never abandon us. The Lord said in Matthew 5, 43 to 44, But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That's the only thing we can do. Whether it will be your family, neighbors, co-workers, whoever it is, even the world, we have to remember Pray for them and love them. Just like what Jesus did on the cross. He said, Father, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. And God will just deal with them. And so in this dream, we see how simple attraction could end up to flirting, then deciding to see and be noticed by the person, which is already a sin in your heart that could lead to sexual immorality, adultery, or fornication. This is now defiling yourself. You're sinning against your own body. That's why in the dream, I'm seeing that this lady is dragging her body and her clothes getting dirty, you know, and you're you're sinning against another person. You're sinning against your spouse. And at the same time, you're sinning against God. This sin will lead to adultery. It could lead to trouble at work, church, and family. And it could lead to humiliation for the things you do wrong. It can even break family apart, you know, and then divorce, illness, fight, anger, and sometimes lead to murder. And we don't want to be a part of this in Jesus' name. Amen. So according to Wikipedia, let's look what flirting is. Flirting is a social and sexual behavior involving body language or spoken or written, written communication. It is used to suggest interest in a deeper relationship with another person and for amusement. A person will flirt with another by speaking or behaving in such a way that suggests their desire to increase intimacy in their current relationship with that person. The approach may include communicating a sense of playfulness, irony, or by using double intendress. See, imagine that others will just make a joke. You really just have to stop when they start flirting with you. You know, don't let them go on. Don't allow them. And so according to Wikipedia, Jezebel uses manipulation and seduction. She misled the saints of God into sins of idolatry and sexual immorality. In particular, Christian associated Jezebel with promiscuity. The cosmetics which Jezebel applied before her death also led some Christians to associate ma makeup with vice. That's the reason why I saw in this dream. The dog was eaten, eating rats. And remember, the Lord compared human as human to animals. And then in the story of Jezebel, remember, the dog ate her body, right? And so, you know, people who will continually with her sin also of sexual immorality, she was like, you know, she fall into her death and she died and her body was eaten by a dog. People seduce others for their beauty and causing them others to sin. And so we don't want to flirt with other people. And you don't allow other people to flirt on you. When you know other people are flirting on you, 
tell them immediately, you know, show them, hey, I married. Don't do that. You're sinning against your husband or you're sinning against the Lord. Stop them immediately. The Lord said in Revelation 2.20, Nevertheless, I have this against you. You tolerate that woman Jezebel who calls herself a prophet. By her teaching, she misleads my servants into sexual immorality and the eating of food sacrificed to idol. You know what? It's like when you allow uh, sexual immorality, flirting and whatever, you're playing with it and you're going along with the flow. It's like you're tolerating it. You're allowing it. You're not supposed to do that. Stop it immediately. The Lord said, you know, you know, this, I believe, the flirting, this sin causes a lot of problem that will be overwhelming. When you sin, it's really overwhelming, you know, from flirting, sexual immorality, you know, it, it will have a consequences. It will be like a domino effect. You will find that out, you know, when, when you sin against the Lord, there's like, problem look at what happened with king david as an example there will be problem that will happen if you don't stop if you don't repent you know it's going to be overwhelming from flirting it will go to sexual immorality you might lose your job you will have fight with your family you will have a house mess because you don't have to, time to clean because you're so upset you could lose your house because you can find the pay the bills, you could be homeless, getting sick, financial problem, work issues, bullying, and so much more. And you don't want to be a part of that in Jesus' name. Jesus is coming. We need to be ready and not to go along with the schemes of the devil. Put the full armor of God. Walk right. We have to be watchful with what our eyes, our mouth, our ears, our hand, our feet do, and what our heart desires. And our thought, we have to be watchful of those. We don't want to fall into sin. The Lord said in Proverbs 31 verse 30, Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. He also said, but I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in her heart. If your right eye causes you to stumble, gouge it out and throw it away. It is better for you to lose one part of your body than for your whole body to be thrown into hell. So brothers and sisters, if your eyes causing you to stumble, you know, don't look, you know, keep it away. Ask the Lord for help. We don't want to fall into sin. Don't flirt and stop people from, from flirting with you. This is a warning for us all. The Lord said in Proverbs 5, For the lips of the adulterous woman drip honey, and her speech is smoother than oil. But in the end, she is bitter as gall, sharp as a double-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps lead straight to the grave. And God warns us of this sin, not just for women, tempting, but also guys. You know, he said in Proverbs 5, 6 to 7, gives, she gives no thought to the way of life. Her path wanders aimlessly, but she does not know it. Now then, my son, listen to me. Do not turn aside from what I say. Keep to a path from path far, far from her. Do not go near the house of her house. You know, brothers and sisters, we need to have self-control. And that's one of the fruits of the Spirit. Self-control and not smoking, self-control and not drinking, you know, committing adultery, fornication, you know, watching porns, uh, fighting with other people, stealing, murder. Don't. You have to control yourself. The Lord said in Titus 2 verse 11 to 12, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passion and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in this present age. Do not lust in your heart after her beauty or let her captivate you with her eyes. Don't let the devil fool you. Don't open the door for them. Be very careful, aware, and vigilant from all schemes of the devil. The Lord said in Proverbs 5 verse 9, Lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel. Lest strangers fest on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. You know, when you caught you know, committing adultery, you could be killed, you could be in jail, you could be pay, paying fines, there's a lot, and people will, you will lose your uh, people's respect. 
So our body is God's temple. 1 Corinthians 6, 16, Do you not know that he who unites himself with a prostitute is one with her in body? For it is said that two will become one flesh. But whoever is united with the Lord is one with him in spirit. 1 Corinthians uh, 6 to 18 to 19, flee from sexual immorality. All other sins a person commits are outside the body, but whoever sins sexually sins against their own body. Do you not know that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God? You are not your own. You are bought for a price. The end of your life you know, in Proverbs, the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. You will say, how I hated discipline, how my heart spurned correction. I would not I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors. And I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God, God's people. Brothers and sisters, people who are sinning adultery, fornication, whatever sexual immorality, they can have any gonorrhea syphilis could even have cancer whatever kind of sin you know they could have different kinds of illness and that's why stop sinning that's why the lord when he's healing people who are you know who are sick he even told me sin no more and so brothers and sisters god wants us to enjoy our own spouse drink water from your own cistern running water from your own well let them be yours alone never to be shared with strangers may your fountain be blessed and may you rejoice in the wife of your youth be content on what you have and be content with your spouse why my son be intoxicated with another man's wife? Why embrace the bosom of wayward woman? For your ways are in full view of the Lord, and he examines all your path. The evil deeds of the wicked ensnares them. The courts of their sins hold them fast. Brothers and sisters, you will be accountable for your sin. Those who disobey will have their punishment. The Lord even said in Micah 6, 13, Therefore, I will also make you sick by striking you, by making you desolate because of your sins. And we all know calamities and plagues are coming and you don't want to die in sin. That's why repent. In Zephaniah 1, 17, I will bring distress upon men and they shall walk like blind men because they have sinned against the Lord. Their blood shall be poured out like dust and their flesh like refuse. You know, troubles are coming in the entire world and we need to make sure we believe and obey God for he is our only defense and refuge. He will not leave us nor forsake us and he is also there for us to those who follow him. God wants us to return to him, repent from our sins, ask him to help to help us to do what is right, just, and pleasing in God's eyes. In Zechariah 1 verse 3, Therefore say to them, Thus says the Lord of hosts, Return to me, declares the Lord of hosts, that I may return to you, says the Lord of hosts. God promised us to be with him. Just follow him. He said in Nehemiah 1 verse 9, But if you return to me and keep my commandments and do them, though those of you who have been scattered were in the most remote, remote parts of the heavens, I will gather them from there and will bring them to the place where I have chosen to cause my chosen to cause my name to dwell. Imagine that wherever you are, the Lord's going to gather you to bring us to the place of safety, to bring us to the new Jerusalem, to bring us with him, and we will dwell with him. For those who trust in the Lord, right, will dwell in the shelter of the Most High. That's why return to God, and he will cleanse us, just like what he, he did to Job. Job 22 verse 23, if you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. If you remove unrighteousness, from far from your tent and so if we repent god will bring the calamity you know if we repent god will not bring the calamities he intended to bring to the land just like the time of nineveh and jonah jonah 3 verse 10 when god saw what they did and how they turned from their evil ways he relented and did not bring on them the destruction he has threatened he told them that he's going to give his judgment remember brothers and sisters all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be complete thoroughly equipped for every good work 
God gave us the Bible as our manual for us to read, obey, and believe, for it is God's words, and the word is Jesus Christ himself, the word of God, for us to listen and obey. God gave us thousands of prophecies that Jesus fulfilled and soon to come for us to be aware and be ready. So therefore, in Revelation 1 verse 3, blessed is the one who reads the prophecy and blessed are those who hear and obey what is written on it because the time is near. To those who faithfully and obediently obey and follow Jesus, listen to this. The Lord said in Revelation 3 verse 10, Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of testing that is about to come upon the whole earth, upon the whole world, to test those who dwell on the earth. I am, let me just say it again. Because you have kept my command to persevere, I will also keep you from the hour of testing that is about to come upon the whole world to test those who dwell on the earth. I am coming soon. Hold fast to what you have, to what you have, that no one will take your crown. The one who overcomes, I will make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he will never again leave it. Upon him, I will write the name of my God and the name of the city of my God, the new Jerusalem that comes down out of heaven from my God and my new and my new name. Brothers and sisters, God is trying to make us perfect in his name. He wants us to obey him, faithfully follow his words and to be watchful about the schemes of the devil, you don't want it to be deceived. That's why he's telling us to put the full armor of God to protect our mind, our thoughts, to protect our eyes, what we're seeing, to protect what our mouth is saying, not to fight, not to be angry, not to curse, to watch what we're listening to. Don't listen to the, the preachers of Jezebel. Don't listen to false teachers. Don't listen to false doctrines, you know. Cover our hearts, protect our hearts that we are loved by God. That's where the Holy Spirit dwells. That's where we're going to the desire of our hearts, supposed to be the desire of the Lord. He gave us the Holy Spirit to dwell in us so we can bear fruit. So when we fully have the Lord in us, that's what's coming out in our mouth. That's what's the desire in our mind. That's what we desire to look, the fruits of the Spirit. What we desire is all about God. What we want to hear, what we want to say, what we wanted to do what we wanted to walk on in love and peace and harmony with one another. So the Lord is trying to tell us the enemy is using different kinds of schemes in order to deceive people. When people are going to fight with you, when people are going to flirt with you, stop immediately. Remember, we're not fighting against flesh and blood, but principalities of this evil world. And we don't want to be a part of that. We wanted to be clean, pure, spotless, and blameless as a bride of Jesus Christ before he comes. We wanted to be with him for eternity. And God is preparing a place for us. He said, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by your name. You are mine. When you walk through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fires, you shall not be burned, for I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. He said, fear not, for I am with you. Do not dismay, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. He will be there for us. All we have to do is believe in him and obey. Remember, faith without deeds is dead. So brothers and sisters, thank you so much for uh, watching this video. God bless each and every one. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord shine his face upon you. And may we continue to share his words in these last days and be prepared for the soon return of Jesus Christ. See you again next time. Please don't forget to like and share. God bless you in Jesus name. Amen.